for all questions. I recognize the Leader of the Opposition. Yeah. Earl Lure was 79 years old. Despite being in generally good health, Earl was admitted to an acute care unit at the Pasco Hospital because of awful choking episodes. His health kept deteriorating, but three weeks later, without even having a diagnosis, Earl was moved into a converted storage room on the transitional care unit to wait for a senior's care placement. The hospital was chronically over capacity and they wanted Earl out. Just a couple days after being moved into the converted storage room, Earl died tragically. His family is here today, Mr. Speaker, because they don't want another Saskatchewan family to have to go through what they have gone through. Last January 6th, the liquid food was plunged into Earl's feeding tube far too quickly and it went into his throat and lungs. Earl immediately sat up. While gasping, he wrote suction on a piece of paper because he knew that he urgently needed that liquid sucked out. Time was wasted as staff tried to get the suction working. Finally, they called Code Blue, but there was no crash cart on the ward. The code team that came from another ward was locked out of the transitional care unit because the wander guard system was activated by his Alzheimer's patient that was at the door. By the time the Code Blue team reached Earl with the crash cart and a portable suction machine, they told the family that it would cause too much pain to try to save him. The Lure family is here today, Mr. Speaker, with a list of improvements that they want to see. Will the Premier commit to finally listen to them and listen to what needs to be done so that our health care system can indeed be fixed, so that the basics can be addressed, and so this family can have some answers as to why they were so horribly let down? Nothing about this government's plan makes any sense. Shutting down a good facility, mixing low-risk youth with high-risk youth, plopping an open custody facility in the middle of Saskatoon with no consultation. None of this makes any sense. And when we look at how that corrections minister mishandled her plans here in Regina, we lose even more faith in this government's plan for Saskatoon. How can we trust that she has asked the right questions about the plan to shut down Yarrow and move an open custody facility into the Buena Vista neighbourhood? Speaking of Moody's, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> agitate bellowing, hollering, very few answers from that, uh, th that government, Mr. Speaker. There's, uh, and there's no doubt, I know we heard a list from a laundry list from the Premier, there's no doubt this SAS party spent a lot of money. After all, it's had record revenues in and they've spent every last dollar and more as they've arrived. It's also uh, somehow managed to drain the rainy day fund and rack up more and more debt. The worst part, though, is that the Saskatchewan families haven't experienced the benefits of this government's massive spending. Classrooms are overcrowded and under-resourced. The waits in ER ERs are unacceptable, and people are crammed into hospital hallways and unacceptable spaces. Seniors' care is a mess, and the cost of living for the people of Saskatchewan is sky high. To the Premier, with record revenues, with the savings accounts drained, and with lots more debt added, as in billions, shouldn't Saskatchewan when people actually be feeling some of the benefits from this? Yeah. Lois Ryan was in a senior's care facility in Saskatoon. On March 12th, less than two weeks ago, her mechanical chair was left in the forward position after her breakfast tray and table were removed, and she fell. Lois fractured her femur just above her knee. She was on the floor for hours before she was found. She fell shortly after breakfast, but an ambulance was not called until 2.30 in the afternoon. Lois died on Friday, and her family is speaking out today. They say that they have seen the quality of care deteriorate over these last several years, and they are appalled that this government removed the minimum care standards from the regulations. Mm -hmm. It should have strengthened those minimum care standards, not eliminated them as they did. Lois Ryan's funeral is this Thursday. Her family is grieving her loss. And they are devastated that her final days were filled with unnecessary pain and suffering because of the awful fall that she experienced. And they don't want other families and other seniors to go through what they have experienced. Yet this government, Mr. Speaker, has just $1 million for non-capital needs in seniors' care in this bu recent budget. You know, that's just one-third of what this Premier spent on an American lobbyist. To the Premier, 
How many more families will need to come forward with concerns about seniors' care before this government will take this crisis seriously? Year after year, this government has had record revenue. It has drained the rainy day fund, and it has added lots of debt. This year alone, it's adding $1.5 billion of new debt. Whoa. With all that spending, people should be feeling the benefits. That's right. Our elders and seniors in Northern Saskatchewan should be feeling the benefits, but they aren't, and that is shameful. Mm -hmm. To the Health Minister, when will this government finally deliver senior health care beds we need in our health region? Yeah. Yeah. The University of Regina president says this government's budget will leave students paying even more, right. class sizes will be larger, right. programs will be scaled back, and quote, students are going to find it harder to get their degree in four years because we are going to have to stagger our offerings. Close the quote. So students are paying more but getting less while at university, right. and that's unacceptable. Okay. But until this budget, students could at least count on the graduate retention program after they completed their degrees. Well, not anymore, Mr. Speaker. This government has racked, uh, raked in record revenues. But instead of saving a single penny, this government has spent all the money and more. Not only that, but this government has drained the rainy day fund, despite governing during very sunny times for this province. And on top of that, this government is adding more and more debt. It's adding $1.5 billion this year alone, and has added over $5 billion since just 2000. And 11, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is appalling that this government has absolutely no plan and no sound answer on how it is addressing the problems in our care facilities. Their approach of 1.3 percent addressing the to over 2.2 billion dollars would take 80 years, and all we get is the premier popping up and patting himself on the back, Mr. Right. Speaker. It is unbelievable. The Ministry of Health says that the infrastructure needs are the biggest challenge. Senior health officials say that it is their major. Uh, top priority, Mr. Speaker, but this government has $28 million, 1.3% of what is needed to address it. And look at this contrast, Mr. Speaker. The, the, the finance minister is talking about millions here. They have $40 million. They have $40 million for John Black's consulting right. fees, yep. but $28 million to address the infrastructure problems in crumbling buildings. Talk about mixed up priorities, Mr. Speaker. Here, here. My question to the Premier, how can he justify that? Here. Can the Minister of Health please tell us how much taxpayers' money is going towards the John Black Appreciation Tea Party on Friday? Sure. Perhaps this government needs to be reminded of what senior health administrators say about John Black. Quote, our experience with JBA has been one of lack of respect, tattling on leaders if they question, expecting rigid conformity in a militaristic style, gossiping and undermining. End quote. This government should be saying good riddance to John Black and tossing out his whole approach to lead. It should not be wasting even more time and more money on John Black events. To the minister, how many other tea parties and appreciation events are taxpayers paying for, and what's the total cost, including John Black's expenses, staff time, travel, cake, and balloons? What's the cost? I listened very carefully to the finance uh, minister's speech last week, and there wasn't one mention of poverty, no. even though this government is supposed to be developing a poverty strategy. Instead, the budget cut, uh, contained less funding for the rental housing supplement, less funding for the child care parent subsidies, less funding for the Saskatchewan employment subs supplement, and it decimated the budget for Sask housing. To the social services minister, why are poor people in our province bearing the brunt of this government's financial mismanagement? Yeah. This Premier and this government have blown through record revenues as fast as the money comes in. This Premier and this government have drained the rainy day fund despite governing during boom times. This Premier and this government are racking up debt $1.5 billion this year alone. And this Premier and this government haven't saved a penny for the future and they have no plan, no serious plan of doing so. How can this Premier, how can this Finance Minister honestly justify this failure of leadership? Donna Hodel was diagnosed with breast cancer and squamous cell carcinoma in her neck 12 years ago. She received 33 radiation treatments. These treatments, they destroyed her saliva glands, which can compromise the health of teeth. The treatments also reduce blood flow to her jaw. She has this to say, quote, because of the decreased blood flow, they don't want to ever pull one of my teeth because the trauma to the bone would make it difficult to heal, resulting in osteonecrosis, bone death. 
Then they would need to remove my jaw completely. The only option I have if I need an extraction is the hyperbaric chamber. My dentist said not to worry, there's one in Moose Jaw. Very convenient. Why won't the Premier reverse this government's decision and keep this vital public service here in our province? Here, here, here. You know, because of her medical condition, Donna would require roughly 20 treatments in a hyperbaric chamber if they needed to pull just one of her teeth. That's what she would have to do in order to avoid a jaw amputation. If we lose the hyperbaric chamber in our province, Donna would have to go to Edmonton for about those 20 treatments. Mr. Speaker, this is such short-sighted and little and narrow thinking that we're hearing from this government today. A, p a valuable piece of medical equipment raised up from the community and for the support for it, Mr. Speaker, right. provided for many years, and at times of record prosperity for many years, this government is pulling it away. We're not right. even talking about tens of millions of dollars here. And even if it was about dollars, Mr. Speaker, we know it actually saves money in the long run right. because you're keeping people closer to home for treatment and you're helping them heal faster. Right. Why they're digging their heels on this with no plan is absolutely bizarre. After years of the lean experiment in our hospitals and care facilities, the majority of nurses say there has been absolutely no improvement to quality of care or patient safety. And a third of nurses say quality of care and patient safety have actually gotten worse. That is an incredibly damning indictment of the SAS Party government's approach to our health care system. But while John Black attends appreciation tea parties and laughs his way to the bank, and while this government keeps pretending this was a wise investment, health care professionals are left frustrated and concerned, and patients are left with a quality of care and level of patient safety that is worse. To the Minister, what will it take for this government to admit that John Black lean has been disastrous where it matters most? And quality of care and patient safety safety. Mr. Speaker, I mean, that Premier is almost an artist of grandstanding. For him to get up, Mr. Speaker, with his policy that sells out the interests of Saskatchewan businesses and doesn't provide best value for taxpayers, and play these sort of games that have direct impact on businesses and the livelihoods of workers across Saskatchewan is unacceptable and hugely weak. Recognize the Premier.